I need a cup of coffee. I also probably need a holiday. Hi. In this week's video, I want to talk about sudden painless loss of vision because that's a really interesting arrangement of words. And um, there's some good anatomy behind it. And I'm gonna lead you towards an idea at the end, hopefully, if this goes right. Sudden painless loss of vision. I was reminded of this because of an exam question that uh, covered this recently. So loss of vision, that's probably fairly self-explanatory. In fact, we're usually considering just one eye, sudden painless loss of vision in one eye. Uh, the loss of vision might be a complete loss of vision um, it might be a dark shadow moves across part of the field of vision um, in one eye, or maybe more than one eye. Eyes are complicated, right? There's way more to all of this than what I'm going to say. Um, or it might be a blurring loss of vision in that eye. Uh, painless means not associated with pain. Sudden, um, this is an acute thing. So it can come on in minutes. Uh, someone could wake up from sleep and have a sudden painless loss of vision in one eye. Um, it comes on in minutes and can disappear again in minutes or hours, or it might become chronic and hang around forever. Uh, might, be, might be permanent, but it comes on rapidly as far as the person notices. Cool new term alert. This is also known as Amorosis fugax. I don't think I've ever said anything that sounded more Harry Potter. Amorosis fugax. Um, Latin word and a Greek word stuck together, um, darkening or obscuring. Amorosis fugax, fleeting, short lived loss of vision, right? Amorosis fugax, sudden painless loss of vision. Now, how could this occur? Ah, this is where anatomy becomes useful. All right, either, number one, light cannot get into the eye. That would cause this. Um, so if, so there are, oh, what's happened to this? What's happened to this eye? Um, there are spaces in the eye filled with fluid. There's a lens, there's a cornea, everything's very transparent because that's how the eye works. So light passes through those transparent things into the eye and hits the retina. If those transparent things stop being transparent, that would be one cause of a loss of vision, right? Two, the retina. If the retina stops working, loss of vision. Three, optic nerve. The optic nerve is carrying all the information from the retina to the brain. If the optic nerve stops working, loss of vision. Those are the three, three, th those are the three things that could happen to cause a loss of vision. Okay, next. Eye, posterior eye, optic nerve. Optic nerve has been cut. In the center of the optic nerve, you can see a tiny little blood vessel. The optic nerve is a big nerve. Whenever we have highly sensitive bits of the body, you know, where you're capturing a lot of sensory information, like the fine touch discrimination, like you've got lots of sensory apparatus on your fingertips, you have lots of sensory neurons in the retina capturing light, so you can make this image, you have a big nerve because you have lots of neurons capturing all that discriminatory information, right? So there's the optic nerve, this is slightly enlarged. And in the center there is the central retinal artery. The central retinal artery supplies blood to the retina. But more than that, this artery is pretty much the only source of blood, the only supply of blood to almost the entire retina. In most people, there is no backup, no redundancy, no overlap, no anastomosis, that's it. You see the problem. The central retinal artery is a branch of the ophthalmic artery. Note the spelling, that O-P-H, 
that last exam I just marked, almost everybody missed out the first H. Um, and in some people, there is a second branch that will supply blood to another part of the retina. But you can imagine that um, if this artery, if the central retinal artery is occluded, is blocked, for example, by a blood clot or by a cholesterol deposit, then the blood supply to the retina will stop, will be lost. The cells in the retina will become ischemic. They will stop functioning, causing a sudden loss of vision. You need to fix that quickly because while any tissue in the body is ischemic, it is being damaged. The cells there are dying, um, which is why this can become a permanent thing, a permanent loss of vision, right? So the central retinal artery. There is a central retinal vein as well in there that could also be occluded and that would limit the flow back from the retina and that would have a similar effect if you were to look inside the eye because the flow is still from artery to venous sides the veins would dilate because the blood would struggle to get out of the eye so you'd see something slightly different but as a person experiencing this you would have a similar issue um, now what's going on here is is that the the retina is essentially an extension of the brain when the eye forms the the future retina the future retina grows out of the brain trailing the optic nerve behind it so it's considered a direct extension of the brain so the blood supply is passing back that way as well um, and the central retinal artery because I said this is a really big nerve, is also supplying blood to the optic nerve, which will lead us to another cause of sudden painless loss of vision. Now, a blood clot, a thrombus in the head is a bad thing. And it's an indicator of bad things, not just because of your vision, but because of course, this is where your brain lives. Uh, and the ophthalmic artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery is also important to supplying blood to your brain. Where does this clot come from? Could it go to a blood vessel supplying the brain? Could it cause a stroke? And so on and so on. So this is a big problem. Now, the central retinal artery, when it passes to the retina, it gives off a number of branches. So if a clot only blocks one of those branches, then the effect on the retina will be smaller. So the effect on the loss of vision will be smaller. So this can be a little bit variable, do you see? If you think about the physical layout of all of this, big arteries, small arteries, smaller branches, uh, a clot or a cholesterol deposit that might completely block the artery. It's been, it's been an embolus, it's been flowing along and it's got stuck somewhere, it could move. This could be variable, so that means that the loss of vision could, be, uh, could last seconds, could last minutes, could last hours, and it could change because this clot could break down, could move. Do you see? So thinking of the physical organisation of this is important in trying to work out what's going on in terms of function. Ischemic optic neuropathy. Ischemic, uh, reduced blood supply to ischemia, you know, um, optic eye, but we're thinking optic nerve, neuropathy, a pathology of the neuro bit, uh, <laughs> ischemic optic neuropathy. So we've seen that the central retinal artery is also supplying blood to the optic nerve because these are the axons of neurons. These are cells. They're big, they're long, they, they need support, nutrients, oxygen, removing CO2, all that sort of thing, right? So big blood vessels, sorry, big nerves also need a blood supply. Um, so we're not talking about the central retinal artery as such or on its own here, but we're talking about um, a problem with the cardiovascular system that can affect the blood supply to the optic nerve. And um, this is, um, associated with giant cell arteritis, often, not always. Um, that's also known as uh, temporal arteritis, temporal regions up here. And this is an inflammatory disease of the 
big blood vessels of the head and neck. It's not clear why it occurs. It's a disease of older people and so on. But it then affects blood flow. The reason it's called temporal arteritis is because in about 90% of people it affects the, temp the superficial temporal artery and you can biopsy it to diagnose it and that sort of thing. But with arteritis, there is a risk of impaired blood flow to the optic nerve. Ischemic optic neuropathy often presents on waking, so waking up, and it often presents as maybe not a complete loss of vision, the, the, a complete loss of vision, but a shadowing. A shadow appears, I think, most commonly on the nasal side, but sometimes in the superior part or inferior parts of the field of vision. And as I said, it may have an arteritic cause, but it might not. But you can see that the retina we take for granted, its blood supply is fragile, but we take it for granted. Diseases of the cardiovascular system can affect these blood vessels and can cause us to lose our eyesight. This is one of the many reasons why we need to look after our health and fitness. I'm not saying that giant cell arteritis is caused by anything like that, being unfit or what have you. It's not always clear why we need to take care of our bodies and our cardiovascular system. This is kind of a catch-all term for health and fitness. But one of the reasons for avoiding cardiovascular disease is to protect the eye and the retina. And your eye is very important to you. There are other, many other reasons for losing vision and many other causes of um, a sudden loss of vision. Uh, bleeding into the vitreous humor will uh, stop light getting to the retina, for example. Bleeding in the retina or deep to the retina will cause a similar problem. Uh, detachment of the retina will cause a loss of vision. Ocular migraines, stroke, those can be other painless causes of sudden loss of vision. But what about uh, loss of vision with pain? Well, infection and subsequent inflammation of these anterior spaces endophthalmitis. Um, usually a bacterial infection causes inflammation and, uh, and damage to this region. That's associated with pain. This is in the anterior eye. A corneal ulcer. So an ulcer in the cornea, again possibly caused by infection, um, will be a painful loss of vision and you're blocking the light, aren't you, that's getting into the eye at this point. Angle closure glaucoma, which is... So there is uh, the fluid flows between the spaces of the eye and angle closure glaucoma where the iris meets the, the cornea up here. Um, that can change and compress the little canals that fluid flows through, limit the flow of fluid and change the pressures in the eye causing a painful sudden loss of vision. Are you noticing a trend though? So all the painless loss of vision conditions I talked about were in the posterior part of the eye and the loss of vision conditions I've been talking about with pain are in the anterior part of the eye and this goes back to how the eye develops. I said that the retina is a direct extension of the brain um, so that forms from the brain and the brain I always have to always have to triple check this because it seems like such an amazing fact that it can't possibly be true but the brain itself doesn't have any pain sensors in it. I mean, it does kind of make sense, but it doesn't kind of make sense. The brain doesn't have any pain sensors in it. We've got lots of pain sensors on our outer coverings, the skin and what have you, but the brain itself doesn't, still doesn't sound right even when I say it out loud. And as the retina is a direct extension of the brain, the retina doesn't have any pain sensors in it either. So these painless sudden loss of vision conditions that I've been talking about are posterior and their retina and optic nerve, and in fact they've been blood supply to those based, haven't they? Whereas the painful loss of vision conditions I briefly mentioned at the end are all anterior because the anterior parts of the eye, the rest of the eye is forming from essentially the face and the face has lots of sensory apparatus and lots of pain sensory apparatus, the trigeminal nerve carries sensation back from the cornea and the anterior eye. So it really hurts when you poke yourself in the eye, doesn't it? And that's the point I was working towards, is that that idea of painless, 
sudden loss of vision conditions, you should think posterior eye. Painful sudden loss of vision conditions, you should be thinking anterior eye. Yes, there's more to it and you will investigate these things in more detail and in different ways and you'll approach these patients, you'll take the history and have way more information than that. But from an anatomical perspective, isn't that an interesting idea? Well, I thought it was interesting and I've entertained myself for 20 minutes, but there you go. Sudden, painless loss of vision, the anatomy behind probably some of the most common causes. But remember that the eye is incredibly complicated and there's always more to it. But it's a good starting point, right? Okay, see you next week. <laughs>